So I've been using the Microsoft Surface laptop, the 15 inch version for a couple of weeks now as my work computer. I gotta say, I really love this thing. But one thing I'm actually not loving is the disk size. The SSD on this configuration is 256 gigabytes, which frankly is really, really small for my taste. So today I'm going to show you how to upgrade the SSD in your Microsoft Surface laptop. The process is actually very easy. Microsoft made it a point to make upgradability of the SSD and repairability of the laptop very, very simple. So we're gonna open this guy up and I'm gonna show you how to swap that out. What I'm gonna use is this one terabyte inland 2230 SSD. So the SSD that this takes is a 2230, so make sure you get the right one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone the 256 gigabyte SSD that the operating system is on onto the one terabyte using this USB adapter. So you can see that I have the NVMe SSD on the adapter. All you do is you plug this in and you run the program to clone the OS and you're all set. One thing that I ran into though, is I usually like to use Macrium Reflect when I'm cloning my SSDs. It's just a preference, but you can use whatever program you choose. Except in this case, because of the Qualcomm chips and the way ARM is different than x86, you cannot use Macrium Reflect, as of this video, to work on this machine. So I had to use a different program called Disk Genius, uh, which was actually very easy and straightforward to use. I plugged in the drive and there's an OS migration or system migration button. All you do is select the disk that you want to migrate your OS to, you expand it to that one terabyte size, and you're good to go. All in all, the process took me less than 10 minutes. It was very, very quick. I don't have much on here, but I'm gonna fill it up. So once it's done cloning, all that's left to do is shut down the device and we're gonna open up the back. Now, one thing that I do wanna mention is that we can do this for you at Micro Center. At the knowledge bar, our service techs can migrate and clone your SSD so you can get a larger SSD that you can pick up in store. We can also swap out batteries or any other faulty components that you have in here. So I'm gonna show you how to do it yourself and it seems like it's too much. Just stop by, we can do it for you. So I have the iFixit kit and I'm gonna use the T5 bit and it's gonna be very, very simple to do this. We're gonna get a little bit closer so you can see the action. There's four little rubber footholes here and these just pop right off. You can just use your finger. There's some notches in there so they line back up when you put them on. But these pop off super easy. Next, we're gonna use our iFixit kit and we're gonna use the T5 star bit. And that's what we're gonna use for these four screws. They're under the rubber feet. I'm gonna put these in my magnetic tray so I can save them for later. They're real small, so you don't wanna lose these. You don't need to use the ply tool. This actually just comes off because this is magnetically attached. There's magnets here that keep this in place. Super easy. So looking at the internals, you can see the battery here and the battery just has eight screws that keep it in place. And you can see the connector and the ribbon cable there. And then here you can see our SSD and that's held in place with one single screw. So here you can see there's the SSD. So that's gonna be swapped out and it has a special housing on it. So we're just gonna use screwdriver to get that out. So this is gonna be kind of a fun one because it has the shielding on it. There we go. So to take the shielding off, I'm just gonna pry this off as gently as I can. So you can see there's a thermal compound on this SSD. So this is what they use to keep this nice and cool. So there's a thermal compound on this SSD. You can see that it's in the shielding as well. There's some thermal compound. And I should be able to just use what was already pasted there. I wanna see if I can reuse this shielding. 
So I'm going to slip this back into the shielding. There we go. So I'm getting the shielding to kind of crack back into place. Getting the shielding to sort of snap back into place with the new SSD on there. I can feel that it's mostly on there pretty good. The trick here is that you want to use the same little hinge it has to guide it right back into place. And I don't think I'm going to get this perfect like it was before, but I will have it on. And this is supposed to help dispense some heat away, but it's also supposed to shield it to prevent any interference from say the Wi-Fi or anything else. Let's see if I can snap this into place. Let's see if I can keep using this shielding. It's not perfect, but it'll get the job done. And it should give me no problem booting. You can see it's in, it's connected. It's in the shielding, it's all connected and good to go. All right, so I have the SSD in the housing here. It's locked in place with the screw. I'm gonna place the cover back on for a moment just to do a test boot and make sure everything's okay. I'll line this up. You can feel the magnets start to tug at the uh, cover. There we go, it's in place, all set. I'm gonna flip this guy over. Now, when you wanna do test boot after changing the SSD you got to plug the power in so I'm going to run that and there we go all set let this run for a minute but it should be a full clone of the SSD so everything should just run perfectly so I'm going to let this run for just a moment and we'll see where we end up success look at that Oh, I have my Windows Hello. Got to stick my face in there. Oh, look at that. And there you have it. We have 951 gigabytes available. All right. And then I can just take this old SSD and I can put it with all of my spares that I have laying around. But that's the process. All right. So now that everything booted up correctly, I'm just going to put the screws back in and I'll put the rubber feet back on. All in all, this is a pretty simple upgrade. This is really easy to do. Um, I think cloning the SSD took about 10 minutes, swapping out the SSD, maybe that was another like 15, 20 minutes only because the shielding on the SSD took me a little bit of effort. You do have to pry it open, but I was able to get it back onto the new SSD. While it's not perfect, it is on and it is functional, so it is working. I'm just gonna put these right back in. And you just take a look at these to make sure that you're matching them up into place. There's two little notches on the side to show how they line up. Literally just presses right in. Sometimes you have to do a little press and twist action. And there we go. I'm gonna put all my tools over here. I'm gonna wipe down this SSD and take the thermal compound off of that guy later. But, but for now, we're all set. Windows hello turns right on. You can see I have 951 gigs of space on this Surface laptop. So that's going to give me a lot of space. I'm pretty happy with it. It's going to be nice and speedy. This was pretty easy, but remember this is something that you can get done at your local Micro Center. You can take this over to the Knowledge Bar and it doesn't even have to be a Surface laptop. It could be any laptop or any device that you have, any PC. We can do part upgrades, drive upgrades, anything that you want. So make sure you talk to someone in service, but if you want to do this yourself, it's pretty straightforward. And like I said, that shielding took a little bit of effort to pry off and I did get it back on. And while it's not perfectly closed, it was functional. It did close around the SSD and I was able to get that into place. So that was pretty easy to do. So make sure you stop by your local micro center. And remember, if you don't have a micro center near you to comment hashtag, I want a micro center near me.